Hello and welcome to A Time to Reconcile. I'm Pastor Tom Pickett. Thank you for joining my wife and I in our living room as we uh, share this sermon message with you today. Uh, the message today is entitled, God's Kindness and Forgiveness. <clears throat> what traits do we associate with knowing that Jesus is the Son of God? Well, love, of course, but how is that expressed? I believe that we are to express Jesus' kindness and forgiveness. <coughs> Excuse me. As you know, life can be hard and tough at times. How do we respond to others when this is happening to us? Well, let's notice what the Bible says to us. <clears throat> Before we do, let's pray about this today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for sending him to us. Please guide and lead and direct us here today. Please inspire us. As we read your word, help your word speak to us. Help us to see how kind and how forgiving you are. You as our Father, and Jesus as your Son whom you sent, and how he came to show us who you are. And then, of course, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We ask and pray for your blessing and your inspiration in the giving of this message and that you'll help me to be clear in my uh, comments and my thoughts as well as in my voice and my, my throat. It's in your holy name, Jesus, we pray and all together we ask you to be with us and bless us in Jesus' name. And we say thank you, Lord. So we thank Lord Jesus for inspiring us today. Uh, let's go to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. And we go, want to begin in verse 32. Luke 6, verse 32. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those with whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be the children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, and that would be forgiving, just as your Father is merciful, because our Father has forgiven us through Jesus, His Son, on the cross. And we are the benefactors of that wonderful blessing. Uh, now let's go over to uh, the 11th chapter of Luke. So we are to love our enemies because we are the children of our Father. That's very important. Excuse me just a moment. So we want to go to uh, chapter 11 of Luke and begin in verse 1. This is the Lord's Prayer in Luke. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John brought or taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. <clears throat> So when we want to do the things that give glory to our Father, as it says here, we know that every time we ask His Son for something we need, well, Jesus will give it to us as we ask Him. So give us each day our daily bread, and Jesus is the one who provides that. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. So in other words, do not judge others, as we are sinners too, and we'd be judging ourselves. And lead us not into temptation. Uh, please protect us from the evil one. 
of Satan. So we see who God is. God is kind and he's forgiving. <clears throat> and we are to be constantly aware of that so we can be like he is. And especially as the Holy Spirit leads us. So, Ephesians the fourth chapter, if you'll turn to that. Ephesians the fourth chapter and verse 25. Let's go there. And uh, we'll start in Ephesians 4.25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of the body. In your anger, do not sin. In other words, do not hate. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold because he, he lives in hatred. And we see a lot of hatred in the world today. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Because we think of others that are kind toward them, we do that. Do not let any unwholesomeness talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. This special relationship there that we have with the Holy Spirit. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you and us. That's who God is. Get rid of sin. Resist the, day, the devil. Draw nigh to Christ in the Holy Spirit and do these things. Be kind to each other and forgive one another. That is how we live life to the full. So I want us to look at the example that we perhaps have heard of before. It was the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Would you please turn with me to John the 8th chapter. John 8 beginning in verse 1. John 8 and verse 1. Then they all went home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught <coughs> in the act of adultery. <coughs> Excuse me. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. <coughs> now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a, a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, he was probably writing down names of people who had been involved in adulterous uh, behavior. That any of you who is without sin be first to throw a stone at her, which is what the law said. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground probably more names of people, men, who had had adulterous relationships. At this, in verse 9, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first because they probably had more opportunities to do this in their lives than the younger ones until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. So Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? <clears throat> As no one condemned you. So before we get to the final comments there, let me pose this to you. How do you suppose Jesus looked? I mean, everybody else was really serious and they were vengeful and they wanted to stone her, so they were angry or mad. 
What was his visage like? What body language did he convey to the woman at the very same time that everyone else is condemning her? Well, we know God, and Jesus was God in the flesh. We know that God is kind and merciful and therefore forgiving. Well, he would have had that look on his face. He would have had a look of kindness and mercy on his face. That immediately calms the woman down. She realizes he's different than the others who want to stone her. There's something about him that's compelling, kind of draws her to him, looking for mercy. Well, that's what she got. Let's talk about this just a moment as we read the final two scriptures here. No one, sir, she said. Where are they? See, who are your condemners? The ones who wanted to stone you? No one's here. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. So there are a couple of things that happened there. First off, he was the only one who was perfect. He had no sin. <clears throat> He's the only one who was qualified to throw a stone at her. <clears throat> and he, he didn't choose to do that, though, did he? <clears throat> well, why? Well, because he is a God of kindness, and he's a God of mercy, and he forgives people. Thankfully, he forgives us. So that's what he did. He made a judgment call to forgive the woman. She was in a repentant attitude, obviously, and he gave her some very good advice to help her life be better than what it had been. He said, don't do this anymore in your life. Don't go back to that sin again. It hurts you. It hurts others. Gave her some very good advice. And I, I personally am assured of the fact that that's exactly what she did. She realized she just got off the death penalty and this man Jesus is the one who gave it to her. her the freedom she had now. <clears throat> so, let's now look at another scripture that talks about what we're talking about. Let's go to John, the 8th chapter. Um, no, we're there, there. Romans. Romans, the 2nd chapter. <clears throat> Romans 2, beginning in verse 1. Here Paul's talking to the Romans. You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because we're all sinners in need of grace and forgiveness. So if we judge someone else, we're condemning ourselves as well. Because you who pass judgment do the same things. That's why we're told not to judge others. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? You know, tit for tat. So we condemn someone who does the same things we're doing and yet we're not caught. Do you think our not being caught is going to be that we don't have to pay the penalty? Well, Paul says, no, judgment's going to come on you too. Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness? Now notice that again in verse 4. Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness? In other words, you take advantage of his kindness and therefore contempt of it. His forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness intended to lead you to repentance. <laughs> <laughs> so when he's kind to us, he wants us to repent. Say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I repent. I realize I deserve the same punishment I just saw my neighbor have. Thank you for your forgiveness. I repent. Now, let's go to Romans, the 12th chapter. <clears throat> Romans 12 and verse 9. Romans 12, verse 9. This is called love in action. I love this passage of scripture. Love must be sincere. You know, people put on love. 
it's kind of like the thing to do in polite society. But so many times they're totally insincere. They don't really love anybody. They're just trying to climb up the ladder. Hey, what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love. <clears throat> Honor one another above yourselves. See, it's hard to do, but it's so refreshing to do. It kind of really you know, takes the monkey off your back to try to impress people that don't want to be impressed. Just be yourself. God created all of us to be valuable to society. You know, we all fit into a niche eventually to help somebody else. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. See, the world's ways is persecuting and, and cursing people. <laughs> We don't want to do that. That's not what love is. We want to do the opposite of that. We want to be kind and forgiving. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Just like Jesus did. He associated with people of low position. Remember who he was. The son of the living God. God in the flesh. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. In other words, he'll take care of us. He'll do any kind of revenge that needs to be happening. He'll take care of that. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In order, in doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Well, you don't do it to put burning coals on his head. You do it out of kindness <laughs> and not judging the person. And then it just automatically occurs that way. <laughs> <laughs> do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good and say what what good can that do how can goodness overcome evil you know the evil people would bring out bigger guns well if if that's the kind of warfare we're fighting <clears throat> well then it doesn't do any good so we have a different tact we have a different strategy. <clears throat> it's called God's love. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten son Jesus to us to forgive us, to save us and forgive us and not to condemn us. That's God's strategy. How did that work? Well, his son was killed on a cross. But then he was raised from the dead. And he gave us the Holy Spirit to live within us where he would live with us and the Father would live with us in our hearts. That's how he does it. If he wanted to destroy all of us so nobody would be saved, it, well he could do that, but guess what? That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to destroy everybody so nobody can be saved. But then God has a resurrection. So God is never finished with saving us until he saves us. And we have to know that, who, that's who God is. Thanks be to God, he's that way. <clears throat> Please now turn to Titus. The book of Titus. It's right before Philemon. Did that help? <laughs> yeah, Titus is one book that we kind of lose in the Bible. It's right after Timothy. So Titus... Um, Third chapter, verse 4. 
Titus 3, verse 4. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared. You know, when He became the light and entered into the world as the baby Jesus. When the kindness and love of God. So the Father sent Him to us out of kindness and love. And Jesus came out of kindness and love for us. Our Savior appeared. We've got the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus coming up in a short period of time. We'll have opportunity to review that many times before that day arrives. He saved us not because of righteous things He had done, but because of His mercy. Because of His mercy toward us who don't do things right all the time. <laughs> He saved us through the washing of rebirth, which is the repentance and receiving of the Holy Spirit, and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously, generously, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, as a help to us and a guidance for us, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. No joke. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. We enjoy life a whole lot more when we do the things that are good helps us, it helps our neighbor, it helps everybody. And we have much to be thankful for that we know what is good and what isn't. Pardon me. Let's now go to Zechariah. In the Old Testament, Zechariah, the uh, seventh chapter. Zechariah 7 and verse 8. Zechariah 7 verse 8, And the word of the Lord came again to Zechariah. Now when a prophet has a word of the Lord come to them, they pay attention and they write it down. Verse 9, This is what the Lord Almighty said, and He says it today as well. Administer true justice, and that's what we do not have in our world today, true justice. There is a lot of injustice in our world today. Show mercy and compassion to one another. And we don't have that happening either. But we should have it happening. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. A lot of oppression going on. Because this is Satan's world, not God's. The kingdom of God which is heaven on earth and the kingdom of light on earth, is in the people of God who believe in Jesus as the Son of God, who've repented of being selfish and contrary and unkind and not merciful, and want to do what Jesus has shown us to do. Do not plot evil against each other. That was in the Old Testament. And it applies in the New Testament as well. And we do not need to plan any evil against one another. As the devil is plotting that against us. 1 John 4. The Apostle John had an understanding of love that was special. And uh, Jesus knew that. So he made a lot of good writings on that particular topic in the Gospel as well as in his epistles. And in 1 John 4, 11, he says this to us. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So today, through the Spirit, we believe in Jesus. 
we receive the Holy Spirit that would be God in us because Father and Son live in us too and it's made complete. Verse 13, this is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. You want to know for sure? Well, John tells us. He has given us of His Spirit. If you have the fruit of the Spirit, you have kindness and you have mercy and you have forgiveness. Those are fruits of the Spirit. If you have the Spirit, that's what you have. And you have other fruits too, but we're talking about those two right now today. And you have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Now let's repeat that and focus on that one moment. And we have seen and testify, and that's what John could do, that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. So that if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And that's what we need to believe and do. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. So God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Well, we're going to have a time of judgment, all right, and you can see the handwriting on the wall. So we want to be in a safe place. We need to be in Jesus as He is in us, and we need to be Jesus, His disciple, His minister, His ambassador. We need to represent the kingdom of heaven on earth today. In Jesus' name. Let's end on 2 Corinthians 5. Please turn to there. 2 Corinthians 5. This is our commission today that our Father has given to us to join with Jesus in His ministry today. In verse 16, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view as we have been talking about. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is, is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. And it's, in, it's here in you and me. All this is from God, our Father, who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So if we believe in Jesus and that He is truly the Son of God, we are a minister of His reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So if you don't know what that is, please go to my website called atimetoreconcile.net and check it out. You can also give donations on that website if you would like to do that. We are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making His appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And that's what we ought to be saying to people today. For God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. See, we've given so much help because God is so merciful. He's even given us His righteousness, the righteousness of His Son, Jesus. Oh, we are so blessed. Uh, we need to go and be the ministers of His reconciliation. Dear Lord Jesus, please bless us to do that. Help us to be inspired through the Holy Spirit to get up and to realize, be reconciled to God. We, The whole world needs that. Anyone we talk to either recognizes it and says, yes, amen, or they say, hmm, I never thought about that, because it hasn't been talked about. It's there, but we haven't preached it like we need to. So please help us to do it and to let it be known that this is how we understand what your word means to us. And we thank you. So please bless us and protect us as we go into this week of Thanksgiving here in the United States and help us to be thankful for your, your truth and your way, for your love for us, your reconciliation, and for being with you as your children forever and ever. 
In Jesus' most holy and righteous name, we pray. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> amen.